NNF After Dark is brought to you by Sandpiper Vacations. For all of your vacation planning needs, visit www.sandpipervacations.com. Tell them that the No New Friends podcast sent you. Welcome to NNF After Dark. Chris is going to take you through the highlights of the previous episode and maybe even say some bad words, plus celebrity interviews, and much, much more. And now, here he is, the scumbag reselling hoarder himself, Chris Yob! Welcome back to another amazing episode of the No New Friends podcast, After Dark Edition. I am your host this evening. My name is Nick, also known as the Emotional Support Gay. And um, (laughs) Chris is on a cruise right now. He um, is wheeling himself around with his broken... I don't even know what he broke anymore. This I, I forgot. I tuned it out. It's Kelly's or penis, something. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, this is penis. <laughs> his so penis? He's, <laughs> his penis. So he's on a Royal Caribbean cruise right now, booked directly through Sam Piper Vacations as we are recording in the Sam Piper Vacation studio. I am here tonight with my lovely co host, Scott from the No New Friends podcast. Hey, girl. Well. <laughs> and we have two special guests on tonight um, the sophisticated gentleman himself. Hello. Good evening, y'all. And then we have another sophisticated gentleman, because I think you're pretty amazing as well, too. Ryan, classic oh, Ryan. I appreciate that. Nobody's ever called me sophisticated in my life. So and nobody will here. ever call you sophisticated again. again. I drank a little bit tonight, too. So <laughs> uh, I'm getting better looking and better looking as that yeah. goes on. <laughs> so, uh, tonight we do, um, we're going to keep part of um, our um, topics a little bit short because we have a really amazing interview that we want to share with you in segment two. Um, but to start the night out, um, we were talking about bars before we got on here. Um, I live in Columbus, Ohio, as well as sophisticated gentleman. Um, I'm not giving out your address. Sorry. I just shared <laughs> with the entire world where you live now. Um, but he has a date coming up. Ooh. So he's looking for suggestions on where to go to, to eat and drink and tell us about under the high school bleachers. So it's oh. good. And that's, that's what I recommend. Well, tell us about dating uh, life. Cause Scott, I mean, yeah. we've been, what? we've been out of dating life. I've been out of dating life for a while. Real quickly. I feel like I need to address the fact that Scott said that under the high school bleachers is the best part. Scott, you're over 40. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why are you still <laughs> under the high school bleachers? Like, do we need to be concerned here? <laughs> the best camera angle is. <laughs> 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 I guess I set myself up for that one, didn't I? Uh, you, oh. you really did. And this um, is why and this is why we're ranked number three podcast because yeah. <laughs> we have a to catch a predator on here right now. <laughs> you know what's really funny? Uh so my daughter's in middle school and you know, middle school is a tough time because kids are are ruthless. And I were I, I guess they were calling her a uh pick me girl, pick me girl. And she's like, you know what that means, right? And I'm like, well, first of all, no. I don't even know what slay means. Wait, you don't know what a pick-me girl is? No. I don't know what that is. No. Wait, what? Wait, y'all don't know? No. We're old. Well, I do oh, now. Oh. I do now. She educated a, me. Yeah, but- a pick-me girl is a girl that's obsessed with being liked by the boys. She pretends to be like she's not like one of the other girls so that the boys like her. Exactly. Exactly. And she's like, I'm not a pick-me girl. I'm not a pick-me girl. And I'm like, well, okay, sweetheart. I was like, um are you flirting with the, with the boys? And she's like, no, she's like, I don't like it. the any boy, any of the boys. And I was like, okay. And I was like, but here's the thing. I said, middle schoolers are assholes. Um, don't pay attention to them and don't worry about it. I'm going to get to my point. I'm going to land this plane. So I said, Abby, I've said, you've heard my podcast. Everybody makes fun of me and I'm just fine. I laugh at it. She goes, yeah, but that's for content. That's not really that true. And I said, eh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> She's, but you all are friends. I'm trying to teach her like, look, middle schoolers are assholes. Don't let it bother you. You landed that spirit airlines very well. So back to the Swiss <laughs> gentleman. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. This is my, um, I guess now it's my bi-monthly therapy session. 
that's free. <laughs> I got, no, I, I do pay for it. I, I pay as Patreon. So yes, you do. Uh, but yeah. So, uh, for folks who may or may not recall, I talked about the difficulties of online dating the last time I was on After Dark. And Chris and I were specifically chatting about the Hinge dating app. So I now have a date planned through that. Ooh. And since I was the one who suggested the date, but I don't know a ton of bars in the area, I was talking to Nick to see if he had any suggestions for good bars to go to. So so is this a night date or a day date? Um, it'll be an evening date. Um, okay. I actually... I'm so sorry, Scott. I don't think I'll be here for the live episode next week as a result. Uh, whoa, why would whoa, you whoa, schedule whoa, whoa. this on a Wednesday? Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> you already have uh, plans that night. Uh, I don't, I mean, I'm not going to be on the episode. Uh, well, she uh, needs to know. What that... are you, Mary? So you're just not going to listen? She needs, yeah. <laughs> she needs to know ahead of time that you already have a prior engagement every single Wednesday. Yes. Or, oh, I've got a better idea. You know what? You go on your date on Wednesday. Why okay. Scott? Oh, I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to say, well, that's even Ryan. You're a genius. That's a better <laughs> idea. I was just going to say, make sure you watch the live with her on the date. So, you mm. know, it's, it's like a bar and entertainment as well. And then she'll get turned on to the podcast, become a Patreon. And then we'll do Mrs. Sophisticated yeah. gentleman uh, mm -hmm. or the, the sophisticated. You, you've woman. made way too many leaps there, sir, for <laughs> a man of your stature. Uh, <laughs> she, she could be the sophisticated woman. I love this. I don't, idea. I don't. It, dude, I haven't even been on the first date yet. That's okay. Listen, this it's, was my problem in online dating is I would I would get a response to a wink or an email back and I was already planning our wedding. I was that guy. Mm -hmm. That's not good. That's horrible for your no, mental health. I'm psychotic. I don't like the way you said that. Uh, That's a clip that we're going to use. <laughs> but look, look at the house that he lives in, though. So, exactly. I mean, it, it worked, it worked out well for him. <laughs> Ryan, I told my wife, I told my wife. Wait, wait, were you saying Ryan or SG? Ryan, Ryan, okay. Ryan. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> I told my wife on our, uh, we were dating for two weeks. I said, I'm going to wife you up one of these days. Oh my God. You're out of your mind. Mm -hmm. And she stuck she, around. Yeah. She almost broke up with me that night. Yeah. I don't blame her. I feel like breaking up with you and we're not even dating. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Uh, sophisticated gentleman, this is your first date with her. It is. Yes. Okay. Or That's it. That's interesting that you're going straight to a bar, like no date, no, like no like want, coffee day. Were you looking for more of a restaurant type feel? What type of what's no, your so idea I, of have, first I know Scott's dabbled a little bit in online dating. Nick and Ryan, have you other have y'all used online dating before? Go ahead, Nick. ish. I guess I don't know. It wasn't really yeah. as big. We got together in 2009, so. I got you. I got you. I have not. So I think the, tr the traditional first date is just grabbing drinks, something that's casual that you can chat over. Um, at least that I've seen for a lot of online dating. That's what I've done in the past. That's worked perfectly well <laughs> for me. Um, Cause if it's a restaurant, you're stuck there. If it goes poorly, you're right. stuck there for mm -hmm. who knows how long um, coffee dates are especially tricky, especially because, you know, as somebody who has a job, usually I'm um, looking to yeah. date folks who have jobs. And so, you That's don't really true. want to be That's up and true. on caffeine. I've never had coffee before. I don't know that a first date's a great time for that. Don't do so. it. No, 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 no. I mean, so Mary's had a lot of first dates with her barista at Starbucks. So, <laughs> <laughs> so which uh, might not even exist. After right, last right. week's episode. But. Yes, it's just the cafeteria lady <laughs> at the uh, mental hospital. So, <laughs> SG, here's um, so you, I did one coffee day date because I always, I what I was trying to do is. I was trying to set myself aside from everybody else, all the other guys on online dating by making the women extremely comfortable. Like, Hey, if you want to bring a friend uh, to this, to this day date or, you know, or date or whatever, so that you're more comfortable, that's fine with me. Mm -hmm. um, and if we get all get drunk enough and uh, end up hooking up, that's fine with me too. No, <laughs> but uh, I knew what you were doing. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it, 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 no, it didn't work. Was, that wasn't the reason I, you know, I just wanted them to feel ultra comfortable. Oh, absolutely. So, That's why you always plan a first date in a public location, which I think a bar is a good place for that because there's yeah. always plenty of other people in a bar. Like even if it's the town drunk, at least the town drunk is there, you know, That's right, somebody right, right. else is a bartender. So, so I, I did, uh, I did have a day date once and during this day date, she's telling me that, you know, she doesn't, um, what was it either doesn't have it doesn't have a car or whatever because she and her ex 
uh, were under investigation for inner uh, for um, uh, insurance fraud because her car caught on fire and then was convicted of insurance fraud because they did in fact light their car on fire. And if you need a lawyer, go to Kaufman and Lind. (laughs) (laughs) And and I was like, oh, I was like thinking to myself, I'm like, why would you tell me that on a first date? Make me fall in love with you first. So I'm in too deep and then can't run away. Dude, some first dates are just so weird. Like the people that you happen to Mm. go on the date with. Like, I've had one weird one. What was yours, Ryan? All right. So I've been with my wife for off and on for like 20 years, but this is not her. So I, I meet a girl on, it might have been MySpace. It was that long ago. And we go on a date. Wait, what's so, that? We're, we're yeah, old. We're old. Wait, what, we what is to, MySpace? Is that like WhatsApp? No, MySpace was like the Facebook. first social media. It was before yeah. Facebook. No, Facebook was first. Facebook was popular, though. If Facebook was first, it was only in Facebook. You had to be in college. Yeah, you had to have have EDU. I never went to college. (laughs) <laughs> well, Carolina. MySpace, you had to have like coding because you had to develop your own freaking page. No, it was yeah, so like, cool. You could put like HTML, pictures and videos like, on there. Yeah, but you'd go to like zappy.com and you'd find a really cool layout and you'd copy the code you and then copy put your it on coding. your profile. <laughs> yeah. So but any, anyways, back to my story. Move, I'm straight. But it played me. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to uh it was a it's a pool bar and we were playing pool. So we played pool. And uh, the only reason she wanted to go on a date with me, because I had a pet squirrel at the time. And she thought that was like the coolest thing ever. Bob okay. Ross, is that you? Yeah, it was awesome, dude. That and is then, the most um, North Carolina thing ever. I found I, him in a car. I had a pet a baby. Listen, I saved his life. And he was delicious. <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> <laughs> No, anyways, after we were playing pool for a while, she's like, hey, I got a couple friends over at this bar. Do you want to go over there? I'm like, okay, we'll go over to this bar. So we're hanging out. It's a restaurant and bar. And we're hanging out there. And then I meet her friends. Two of them are minors. And somehow throughout the night, I ended up in the car with the two minors and her. And they said, oh, so-and-so just pulled up. So the girl I was on a date with got out of the car and got into this guy's car. And the other one said, she better not be doing coke again. (laughs) <laughs> oh i'm like wait 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 and the two minors are drunk i'm like for one i'm old you know i'm older than these two two minors drunk minors in a car and i'm in there with them. i was like i'm done so i got up and i went and i pulled the no i didn't pull it out of the car i talked to the girl in the car i was like listen i'm gonna leave she's like oh why why i was like you really have to ask <laughs> so I, I just got the hell out it was it was a crazy night you didn't pull the walter franco card well, thank that? god walter what? franco are you are you referring to somebody from the 30s? Yeah, Walter, no, but... <laughs> Walter Franco is somebody they're actually talking a lot about on Studio 21, the baseball podcast right now. Oh, He's a Tampa Bay Rays player who um, was found dating a 14-year-old, and now he's mm-hmm. no longer on the roster for the Rays and Everybody is facing charges that's, in that's, the, the Dominican Republic. That's known as the Republic. Scott Maffei card. It's not... <laughs> <laughs> I, and listen, I'm not going on dates with underage minors there, uh uh dude you were the one talking about the high school bleachers about 10 minutes ago she's underage (laughs) (laughs) well before we get canceled um things things escalated (laughs) very quickly on that one um sg i really hope you have a great day please come back and let us know how it went um we are all very excited to hear about it yeah Um, we're gonna we are going to take a short break, but when we come back, um, Scott uh, is going to talk about our special guests that we have coming up in a, an amazing um, interview. So here's the thing. Nick <laughs> just kicked it over to me. Thank you, Nick. Brilliant uh, broadcasting. I'm sorry that I screwed that up, uh, but uh, we do have a, a really cool interview with Dave Shelton. Uh, now, you may not know the name, but you know his work. Uh, he was a writer on Everybody Loves Raymond. Uh, He was a uh, cartoonist for National Lampoons. He's a brilliant animation specialist. He did the animation uh, for the the graphics as well as the set pieces for Double Dare uh, and Nickelodeon Arcade. Uh, I think that was the game show. So a, a ton of really cool stuff. But he is just such an interesting interesting person he's super funny so enjoy that and this is the first celebrity interview that they invited us on their podcast so that's super exciting so we'll be doing that very very soon so enjoy our interview with dave shelton
There are three things that I hate in life. Taxes, nausea, and booking vacations. The first two I'm stuck with, but for the third, I use Sandpiper Vacations. Sandpiper Vacations is a small business that is LGBTQ plus owned and operated with travel advisors all over the country. Whether it's a cruise, a trip to a theme park, or an all-inclusive resort, Sandpiper has you covered. Oh, and I forgot to mention, it's free. Why book a vacation when you can have someone else do it for you? That's like choosing to take the stairs in a building that has an elevator. Leave the headaches of booking a vacation to someone else. Get your quote today at www.sandpipervacations.com and tell them that the No New Friends podcast sent you. Hey everybody, it's Scott from the No New Friends podcast. If you'd like to hear all of our episodes, all of our past episodes, just visit our website, nonewfriendspodcast.com. All of our links to all of our old episodes are there. If you didn't understand an inside joke or just wanted to re-listen to something, just check it out. It's nonewfriendspodcast.com or you can check us out on all streaming platforms. Welcome back to the New New Friends podcast. We've got another special guest, and and this guy's electric. You're gonna love him. And uh, if we're if we're lucky enough, maybe he'll do his famous Eddie Deason impression. If we're really nice to him, uh, it's a really good one. Uh, you may have seen his work. He's a se- senior writer and head cartoonist at uh, National Lampoons. Uh, he worked on Comic Relief. He was a writer for Everybody Loves Raymond, several children's books. Uh, he's got his own bestseller, Brain Explosion. Um, he's got his own radio show, Cemetery Go-Go, which is a nationally syndicated radio show, uh, and even got to write the theme song for the Special Olympics. I'm talking about Dave Shelton. Dave, how are you this evening? I'm getting it. It's nice to be here, and I, Eddie couldn't be here tonight, so then I take his place. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> I, you, know, you asked me if I was going to throw that in. I said, let's get it over with before. <laughs> hey, Eddie, how are you? <laughs> what? what what's so more like Eddie than Eddie does. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I spent enough time with him. <laughs> yeah, what's so funny, Chris, I got to be on the phone with both him and Eddie, and Dave was doing his Eddie impression. And it was perfect. <laughs> Just, oh, you're such a great guy, you know, because Eddie is very complimentary, and Dave did the, it was perfect. That's perfect. amazing. Well, yeah, I've, I've spent a lot of time with Eddie, so. That's all. You guys just did a signing together, right? Or going to do one? No, that got that got canceled. Oh. Well, they yeah, figures it's, it's typical. There's always something, but it's supposed to possibly be a workshop that I'll be doing with this person in it's either Maryland or Virginia. I forgot which, but yeah, nothing's nothing's been set yet. So no, unfortunately, I won't be seeing Eddie and doing dual Eddies. <laughs> you know, like the <laughs> dueling banjo, <laughs> or dual, or what? Remember they did dueling brandos on Saturday Night. Live? Oh man. I could have been looking down, I could have been something for that thing to tell you about my night. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So, Dave, you've got this impressive like voiceover career, uh, writing, producing. Where did everything start for you? Uh, I think it was at birth. <laughs> <laughs> my, I, I had such a horrible childhood. When I was born, I think my father said, look, there's the failure. And oh. so I <laughs> Oh, wow. So I had to kind of prove him wrong. No, I'm exaggerating, but um, <laughs> it's like, oh, just leave him outside. Someone will pick him up. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I don't know. Ever since I was little, I've always felt like I, I was drawn to it between writing, um, producing, voiceovers, cartoons, anything that was creative. But you know, I was later not diagnosed with ADHD and dyslexia. So uh, after, you know, reading a lot, I actually diagnosed myself with it because I can never turn my brain off, which is why my book is called Brain Explosion. Ah. And co- that was a collection of all my work from National Lampoon, by the way, my cartoons, writings, things like that during that era. But when I was putting it together and people go, don't you ever get writer's block? And I said, I don't even get sleep block because I really <laughs> never sleep. So um, I, I think it's just from all of that and, and a love of everything, cultural, entertainment, 
even on the political side, but not as much, even though now I could mention I'm running for state delegate here in West Virginia again. Oh, very oh, cool. Wow. wow. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. There's even corruption here in West Virginia. <gasps> oh, my. <No>. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. There's enough truggies here to vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what was kind of the first? Because you do you do so much. You're you're kind of like the triple threat of behind the scenes stuff: writing, animating, uh, or or you know cartoons, uh, and then voiceover. So, what what was like kind of the first thing that you did? Uh, well, just to finish with that thought. Uh, the reason I actually do a lot of it is because you can get out of work pretty fast in our industry. And then there could be a big void of when your next job is. And as um, we were talking off camera, I've had a lot of weird jobs coming up through this whole world. And um, so you kind of have to diversify yourself. As far as the voiceovers, uh, it was something in high school. I was the announcer for all our basketball games because believe it or not i did play sports um i actually got to coach basketball with mike dunleavy of the lakers oh and my gosh and jim herrick at ucla yeah you wouldn't think to look at me right but in high school <laughs> the jocks couldn't beat me up because i was one of them and they wouldn't beat me up because and the nerds accepted me because i was like them too when i was in the ab club so yeah, so during basketball, I got to announce. And what was funny is I would always make up voices while I was doing the announcing. And the athletic director was such a square in, in northern New Jersey. He would come over. And most say, New Jerseyans are squares. We're used players. to it. What's that? I said most New Jerseyans are squares. We're we're used to it. And, well, I wrote a song called "The Jersey Cool Is Gone," and I'm looking for a group now to record it. And I, I even sent it to Southside Johnny, if you remember him. He he was discovered by Bruce Springsteen, and he had a couple of hits and stuff back in the 80s. Um, so I would make up these voices, and then the athletic director would walk over to the broadcast table, and he'd go, what the hell are you doing? And like during a, a timeout, and I'd say, what? And he goes, go, just announce the friggin' game. <laughs> <And I'd> go, <laughs> I said, that's no fun. Um, John Bilney, and I mean, they'd be like, he wanted me to go. John Bilney goes to the basket up for two <laughs> points. He misses it. It's rebounded by the defense. They come down the other way. I mean, it's like the audience would get so freaking bored. They loved when I was doing that. So that kind of started it. And then any everywhere else I could go to record or do voiceovers. I went to summer camp and I was um, in upstate New York and I was a counselor. After a while, I did the morning announcements. Oh, gosh. And that, was, that was great. Getting them up at six in the morning. And the song that I used was Madness's One Step Beyond. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've ever heard that song. It goes, One Step Beyond. And I'd go, Hey, campers, it's time to get your asses out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how those were some of the first jobs I had. And then you know, people would ask me to do voice for just little commercially things and stuff like that. And it just went from there. That's that, that's amazing. But it's funny, even in high school, you were div diversing yourself to survive, you know, uh, athlete. I don't uh, want to I don't want to get beat up. I already I, I got two <laughs> bites as a kid and it wasn't fun. I, I broke my nose. Someone broke. Well, I say I broke my nose. Yeah, with this fist. But <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, yeah, I, I usually was able to talk my way out of things, but I also defended the nerds. I had to do that, too. And sometimes that was a big crossover, but um, I, I just loved it. That's so cool. Um, how long were you at National Lampoons and, and, and what what work would we have seen? Well, I wound up going the transition to get to Lampoon. Um, if I could just go to a little backstory on it. Please is, do. Yeah, I, please. I was working in, I was still in New Jersey and I graduated University of Florida and I went back to New York and I lived there for a while and I got a job working at uh, Nickelodeon when it was first yeah. starting doing artwork. And then I was a rock journalist for Tiger Beat magazine. Oh, wow. 
Now, wow. I know all you guys read that too because of you know, <laughs> uh, Tiffany and Debbie Gibson. Yeah, things like that. Exactly. <laughs> so. and, and you, and you got to know what things to say on a first date. Uh, you know, there was so Scott many stories in there. Oh, Stop absolutely. it. Chris. This was great for guys <laughs> and girls. So, so I was writing for them. Then I got to write for some, for 16, a couple of others. And I was doing a comic strip there. Uh, called Toon Groupies, which I'm adapting into a TV show right now. But um, I, through that, I met so many people and I got to do the Grammys. And so I met Tim Allen and I got, was at MTV as well because they were owned by Viacom. So they, um, so we got spread back and forth. So I was doing artwork and then I got to do artwork for Double Dare, the game show. Oh my God. That was my favorite. I love Double Dare. Help with building the physical challenges and designing and doing artwork for that. Oh my so I met Tim. I met Tim Allen through all of this. And I also was doing stand up. And um, I worked on this book called Comic Lives with a producer named Betsy Bourne, who wound up producing the Sabrina Teenage Witch series. Right, in the right. 90s. And mm. she was with Rolling Stone magazine. Um, so Tim asked me to work on something. And then Robert Wall from Batman and Arliss. And uh, then he asked me to work on his HBO special. So that was coming to California. So I said, you know what? I'm ready to go to California. I talk like a Valley guy. I look like a (laughs) Valley guy. So why don't I live in the Valley? So (laughs) I moved there and then through them, I met the people at Lampoon. And coincidentally enough is that was my dream job. When I was in at the University of Florida, I pledged a fraternity, and it was when Animal House came out. Oh, yes. <laughs> I said to myself, if I am ever going to make it in this freaking industry, it's going to be with National Lampoon. I don't care when or how. So, you know, as serendipity had it, I got to meet the guys at Lampoon in L.A., and they loved my stuff and, you know, the weirdness that I had. And I got hired and I started working with them in like 91 and I worked there until 99 when they sold the company. Wow. wow. Did, did you work on any of the, the film animations? So there's that whole cartoon or any sequence of the live for Christmas action Vacation. Films. Well, they yeah. didn't, back in the 90s, they, it was a weird transition for Lampoon. Uh, the, the best thing I got to do was work with Jamie Kennedy because he actually worked with us at Lampoon before he got Scream and three kings and oh, wow. he was you know a struggling actor he was still doing stand up and although i think it's gotten so crazy i don't know if people want him to do stand up they get scared of him now if you've seen his more recent <laughs> performances and um so he was great to work with and we got along great we became really good friends so um i just started doing a lot of the stuff for the magazine and then products um, I would create uh, greeting card lines and trading card lines. And I was involved in two book collections where a lot of my cartoons were in it. Um, I would do writing for the magazine. And then I would also put together some comedy sketches. We were going to do some things like Mad TV kind of stuff. And right. uh, unfortunately, you know, none of that transpired later because the guy that bought Lampoon in the nineties from Tim Matheson was Jim Jamero and he had come from the Disney channel. Wait, hold on. So, hold on. Uh, sorry. You're going to have to educate me real quick. Did Tim Matheson own national lampoons like Tim Matheson he, from yep, animal house? Yep. Holy Otter, crap. I yep, never Otter, knew that. Otter owned lampoons. Wow. I never yeah, knew like, that. He only owned it for a couple of years. I don't, I don't think he knew what to do with it. Right. Um, because you know, like, um, Kenny died and some of the other people from the original Lampoon world when they was Harvard and um, cause Doug Kenny was like the guy who was one of my idols growing up um, because not only of what he did with Lampoon, but with Caddyshack and, you know, all the other things that he was involved with. Right. Um, so I had to kind of take the reins on a lot and, and, and work with it. And that's why I said, you know what, I have a really big history in branding. Also putting stuff, I've had products in Spencer's and oh, wow. stores when Mervyn's was around. Wait, what kind a- of products at Spencer's? Because I'm sure Sarah is very familiar with your work. 
<laughs> oh my God, I love Spanish. Well, these were all part of Lampoon. Um, okay. We did a lot of adult novelties. Uh huh. And, and, as you See, Sarah, get, you're probably very familiar with his work. <laughs> remember in Animal House when Otter had that doctor spag and he's there at the um, at the trial? Yes. And he point and he kind of taps it as he's pointing to everybody. Yes. You don't know what was in that, but you do. And that was the kind of stuff that we also put out. Okay. <laughs> I'm so demented. I'm so politically incorrect. It's great. No, oh, it's fine. It's our favorite kind of people. Right? <laughs> Fuck so, yeah. Did I hear correctly that you that you worked for Disney also? You did uh, animation or, or cartoons for Disney? I did cartoons for Disney for a little while. It was more of an assignment. Okay. I was hired to write, I mean, to draw penciling for the TV version of 101 Dalmatians. Okay. Oh, cool. And I was assigned to the poodles. You know, the ones that are there, <laughs> like the obnoxious poodles. Right. So awesome. yeah, I had to do penciling for that. And that was when it was still two dimensional. They hadn't gone a lot to CGI yet. Pixar sure. was just kind of coming into its own on it. Um, and I love 2D. I love drawing. So for me, that was such a great job. And then from That's there, awesome. I got asked to work for uh, Klasky Supo, the ones that did Rugrats. Oh, oh wow. Nice. Oh. One of my favorites. So, so I got to do drawing for them as well. That is so cool. That was Are fun. Okay, got to interrupt here real quick because it's not going to make much sense, the transition. Uh, but we did talk to him a little bit about his appearance on the People's Court. Now, he has asked me to remove that uh, portion from the episode in fear of any type of retaliation from uh, the person that he was talking about. So you're going to hear his transition from Disney to him calling people uh, in Hollywood, some people in Hollywood dickwads. So I just wanted to bring context to the editing job because it's not going to make much sense. Now, if you're very confused and you're like, man, I really wish I would have seen that story. Let this be another lesson, another learning opportunity for you. You're going to want to join our clubhouse, become a Patreon member for as low as $2 per month. And you can watch us as we, we record these things live. And also I put the full unedited video in patreon so you can watch it uh so you know you don't want to miss out for as low as two dollars a month on some of these things that we have to cut out okay here it is uh this is us talking about some of the dickwads in hollywood yeah unfortunately but you know that's kind of some of the stuff you have to deal with there's so many dickwads in the entertainment industry as you probably are aware i didn't and, know that actually and and they have such tender egos no one has any i've run into more dickwads in the uh in the music industry uh i oh, went I, since i'm a musician also yes i've experienced that as well all right so my favorite band is the beach boys favorite band of all time love the beach boys and oh, wow. they're they're way past their prime clearly but they so they do a lot of theme parks. Mike Love and John Stamos that because they're still out there doing it. They are, they are. <laughs> so they they do. I, I'm in Orlando, so they do Universal Studios every couple of years, and they do SeaWorld. So at, when they do the Universal show, it's it's every like they Mike Love, John Stamos performs. Um, always Bruce Johnson because he's got nothing else better to do. Um, <laughs> sometimes they'll get Al Jardine. Uh, you, you never know. The SeaWorld right. concert is not as as big of a deal. It's usually just Mike Love and Bruce, maybe. Right. Well, so, don't they call it like Mike Loves Beach Boys or something like that? Uh they may now. I know he has the. I know he owns the name. Yeah, he. They um, may now, but like during the middle of the concert, they do this whole Mike Love like new songs, and I'm like, nobody is here to see that. Like we just <laughs> want the. We just want the classics. Oh, so, it's like an old, it's like an oldies group trying to do a new song. Oh, here's our new release. Right. And it's, and it's <laughs> awful. No and right. they're like, oh my gosh, you know, it, what, what do you listen to? See that. You yeah. know, like rap music and trying to make a pop song with it or something, or <laughs> listen to every Jason Aldean song that's out there and just trying to copy that. And yep. it's, it's very rare. The only group that consistently does that, and I'm working with them on a few things, is Cheap Trick, as far as I'm concerned. They keep recording. They keep putting out amazing stuff. I wrote uh, Robin Zander's a good friend of mine, and um, I worked with him on some graphic novel stuff oh, and cool. even one of his album covers. And 
now I wrote a, a film for him for for actually oh. all of the trip. It's um, Jamie Kennedy, Scott Schwartz from Christmas Story. Oh wow! And cheap and cheap trick, and it, it's really it's it's like Dickie Roberts meets Detroit Rock City. Oh, cool! That's it's very really cool. bizarre. Wow! It's called Schwartzy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's about a former child star who's Scott, and he, when he grows up, he becomes a deadbeat, of course, um, kind of like half the child stars. <laughs> and, but, but then he become he gets a um, a wire that he inherited this huge estate of like billions of dollars from a fan of his who passed away, and he goes to collect, and then the family of the guy. Um, tries to kidnap him and get him to sign over the estate to them. And they're those typical uppity kind of um, Kardashian kind of families. And um, and his best friend is Jamie Kennedy, who's a burnt out rock star. <laughs> okay. And when he has the launch party, he invites Cheap Trick to play at the party. And when he's kidnapped, Cheap Trick and Jamie all go to find him. So they're actually in the movie as characters. That's oh my cool. That sounds amazing. <laughs> it's really fun. Chris or Sarah, before I hog up all the time, any questions for Dave Shelton? Dave, oh. you've been working with a lot of different celebrity actors and actresses on set. When you're ever in these close quarters with them, do you remember one or maybe multiple instances where it could either be good or bad, the stench or good smell from one of these actors or actresses? <laughs> who's so basically who's the smelliest actor or actress you worked with? Physically or emotionally? Oh, that's, <laughs> a, that's a good question. It's a new layer Actually. we haven't reached. <laughs> Cause some of them go hand in hand. I could tell you one of the best ones. Okay. Um, well, a few. One is Jeanette McCurdy. Really? Yeah. Um, I directed her in a pilot back in the early 2000s before she got iCarly. Uh -huh. And she was one of the sweetest, nicest people. And I know I just finished reading her autobiography. I would, I would, I'm mm -hmm. glad my that, mom's dad or something like that. Yeah, it is. I, I knew her pretty well and her mom, but I did not know the extent of what her personal life was like. Wow. But, but when we worked together, she was one of the sweetest, nicest people. Um, and she didn't smell at all. She like didn't have a bad stench about her at all. Um, Paul Servino, I worked with him on a show in the 80s. Uh huh. And then a, a bunch of, this was in New York. And all he did was talk about himself and how great he was. Really? And he would sing in the middle of a take. He would sing opera, like just break out into it. And I was like, oh, and I was just starting out. I, I was like in the art department and I'm just, like, oh my gosh, this guy is so full of himself. And, you know, I know it's a Jersey thing, but <laughs> he, was, he was Chris Christie before Chris Christie. <laughs> it's the best way I can, I can think of it. And then a bunch of years later, um, Probably before I moved out, I'm saying maybe about eight years ago, I was uh, living in Sherman Oaks and I used to jog around the neighborhood in the Studio City. There's a gas station on Coldwater Canyon and I was just jogging by. He comes pulling out of a gas station like there's some gangbanger following him and he's in a Mercedes. He practically clips me. Oh and God. he turns the corner and there's a light there. Moore Park is the cross street. And I just like run up in the middle of the intersection and go, Hey, you like almost ran me over. He opens, he doesn't want to open the window. He thinks I'm like some sort of, you know, <laughs> killer or something. And then I said, come on. And said, and by the way, I worked with you in the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> so he finally opens the window before the light changes. And he says, what? What? I said, you almost ran me over there. And he said, I don't care. Get out of my way. I'm in a hurry. Oh, my God. Wow. The light, then the light changes. And um, and off he goes, and I'm stuck with traffic. And I'm, like, trying to dodge it. Um, 
like Arnold just going in and out of traffic. And <laughs> fortunately, I was able to make it. But oh, my gosh, it was like awful. So wow. yeah, he, he's one to not have a good time with. Um, then there's Tiny Lister. Remember him? Tiny Lister. Tiny Maybe Lister him. was the president in The Fifth yes. Element. And he was in the Friday movies. Yep. And he was one of the guys with uh, Dr. Evil in jail. Uh huh. Yes, so, I, remember, I, I, I recognize him instantly. Yeah. Well, anyway, I had written a film actually that wound up being stolen and released by Lionsgate, a dog movie I wrote with Erwin Keyes, who you might remember from House of a Thousand Corpses. He was the guy with the big head and Sid Haig at the beginning. Uh huh. And he was in the Jefferson. I mean, he, he the Flintstones. Well, anyway, he had written, and I wrote this dog movie, and then um, uh, we were selling it, and I was looking for different people to star in it, and I met Tiny, and he decided, yeah, he would love the script, he'd be in it. He stole the script, brought it to AFM Market, um, hooked up with the sleazy producer, they made it with Mira Sorvino, Oh my gosh, full circle. But, yeah, but Mira's fine, it's like, you know, I... Um, I never even actually got to meet her, but uh, then the movie was released and, oh, Ralph Macchio is in it. Oh, also. wow. And it, it, it wound, they butchered the script. It was awful. Um, so, and then I saw Tiny when we were going to do a lawsuit because we traced it back to him stealing and I had all the paperwork. So I meet him at a party and I say, hey, Tiny, you know, he stole my script. He says, get the fuck out of my face. I don't care. I'm going to kill you. What? Oh, right my to God. My wow. face. And I wow. said, yeah, you and who bouncer that you're going to have. Like, <laughs> 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 like guy, five, eight. He's six, eight. And, you know, he's looking at me going, I'm going to kill you, man. You better not be around here no longer. <laughs> Oh my god! See, the same thing happened with Snoop Dogg. I almost got attacked by him. What? Are you serious? <laughs> oh my god! I was I was at a party in <laughs> Beverly Hills at a mansion, and it was of course a rap release party. And I was with my friend Larry B. Scott, who was Lamar in Revenge of the Nerds. Okay, <laughs> remember him? I am Lamar. And <laughs> so we're just hanging out, and he, you know. Larry knew I was a guitarist and musician. There was a piano there and we were just kind of hanging out talking. So, and I remember the party distinctly because I was the only white guy outside of some of the executives <laughs> there. I said, are you sure it's cool for me to be here, Larry? And I'm going like in my nerdiest voice. Are you sure it's good for me to be here? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should go down to like that Midler's party or something. <laughs> So, um, so then he calls Snoop Dogg over and of course he had his, whatever he called it back then, posse crew. And he comes up and Larry goes, Hey, you know, this is Dave Shelton from Lampoon, Raymond, you know, you should get him to draw you a picture. He's a great cartoonist. So, he, you know, he does this kind of bop that he always does. And I go, Oh, great. I said, get me a piece of paper and pencil and I'd be happy to draw you something. Well, I guess that set him up. I guess you don't tell Snoop to do anything. <laughs> so he gets in my face like this close, and he says, "Get your own fucking paper and pencil." Oh my <laughs> god! Oh. And then <laughs> I said, "Well, I guess you're not getting a drawing then." And he didn't like that. <laughs> so, so he starts backing up, you know, with like the fingers, right. and then <laughs> as he's doing that, I'm enveloped by his crew of these big guys and Larry is like smaller than me. He's super skinny. He's trying to get in between us, go, it's cool. It's cool. Dave's cool. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and um, <laughs> for, so I, I would always tell Larry and I've worked with him on a few things. I said, you saved my life. Thank you. <laughs> from, <laughs> same thing from Snoop Dogg's crew. <laughs> and I, I had to get uh, later escorted. Oh my so, God. Gosh. But you know what? I guess you know from being from Jersey, it's a we don't get scared of stuff. You know, no, like, it's a little alarming how yeah. That yeah, we, don't. we speak our minds <laughs> and it's the truth. One thing that people in the industry can't handle is the truth. They can't handle the truth. 
<laughs> so New I Jersey is a kryptonite of Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do that with people when they get all in my face about things. And, you know, I've always been very independent when it comes to my work. I'm not one that's going to kiss up to get a job. Right. Um, even though it's probably cost me a few things, but I, I have to be truthful with myself because I would feel so miserable if I wasn't myself and I didn't stand up for myself. And I use, I would do that with a lot of other people and they would be like, Oh, thank you, Dave, for doing that. The other thing is it's like people don't will always come to me later and go, Oh, we wish we had invested in your stuff because they're always saying uh, like, Oh, if, if they want to do something, Oh, we got to do it like this. We got to do it like that picture or that studio or that actor. And I go, you know what? And I'm a very astute judge of character and script and dialogue because that to me is the most important thing. So when they go off and copy like um, Fast and Furious or they're going to do another Star Wars type ripoff thing, mm -hmm. um, they'll come back later and they'll go, I lost millions of dollars in that and you were right. Hmm. And I said, well, my unemployment check appreciates that. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel like now uh, they people should be taking you seriously. I mean, you've been compared to your writing has been compared to Ray Bradbury, uh, and your cartoon work to Charles Charles. Oh yeah, God, I've Charles had Schultz. so many people say that, and in fact, some of my cartoon work is in the Charles Schultz Museum in Santa Rosa, oh, California. Wow. Wow. That's and so then cool. some others are in the Hague Museum of Cartoons in Jersey. Oh, Although I'm, cool. I forgot where it is, but it's there. Hmm. So um, yeah, that, I'm I'm very proud of that. That's 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 really neat, really neat. Um, so Bitchy the Clown, uh, tell us about Bitchy the Clown. Oh, another one of my little offshoot love project. Well, being from Jersey and being very <laughs> politically incorrect and being very vocal. Um, I needed an alter ego. And because I was a clown in the circus, um, I was also a clown at ground round restaurants in high school was one of my jobs. And if you know Jersey, well, you're younger, but um, back in the late seventies, early eighties, there was a restaurant chain where they had a clown like Chuck E. Cheese. And I was also Chuck E. Cheese, by the way. Oh my and, God. <laughs> wow. But as, as a clown, you had to go around the restaurant and entertain people. So from there, when I was in college, one of my summer jobs was as a clown in the Clyde Beatty Cole Brothers Circus. And they were like the second biggest circus to Ringling Brothers. And mm. they were also the one of the ones that got shut down because of the animal things. Although when mm. I was there, they never abused the animals. This PETA thing just got way out of hand. So... Um, I thought, okay, with all this stuff together, I'm going to create an alter ego, but he's going to be like the nastiest clown. And <laughs> thank, I, I have to thank Krusty for inspiring it <laughs> because I love Krusty the Clown. And I'm a huge Simpsons fan. But uh, even after they went politically correct, uh, that's another thing. <laughs> so I said, what is like one of the nastiest things you could say without using the word fuck and i say bitch so and i said okay i'm always bitching everybody always says dave you're always bitching about something so I said, oh okay and that's how bitchy the clown came about <laughs> I love so that. He, he started as just a clown that would go to things and insult people it's like a cross between crusty and the insult dog the oh. one with the cigar in his mouth <laughs> yes <laughs> And, um, and from there, I developed the costume and the hair, and we show up at, like, um, Hollywood events. And then he got an opportunity to be on that radio show. So I said, hmm, this would be a good way of getting him out nationally. So he was really popular on that. And from that, I got to meet Alki David, who created Battle Cam, which is this deviant station. Um, Alki David is, he's either Greek or Italian and his family are billionaires and he bought up, a, um, I think they bought up Coke or Pepsi or they have a big interest. So he decided to buy up a, a TV station out of Barstow, California, 
by broadcast from Beverly Hills. And what he would do is he'd have people stream and the more disgusting or sexual somebody did on the station, he would pay them like a dollar a minute if they're not voted off. But in the studio, we would have celebrities like F-list celebrities like Janice Dickinson, Andy Dick, you know, people like that, Cato Kalin. <laughs> and I actually worked on a movie with Cato, believe it or not. He's Cato Kalin, uh, he like, he's got his, uh, you know, everybody goes for their 15 minutes of fame. He's got about an hour and a half at this point. Oh, I, I, I know it's a horrible joke, but I say he's got his... Um, 15 inch of fame. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to connect it to the, to a murder, but <laughs> he, that's what he, did. He, he used that as a total stepping stone for him to, to get into it. But um, yeah, a year ago or a couple of years ago, I saw him on celebrity big brother. And I was like, what? Yes. We're putting like witnesses <laughs> on a uh, celebrity oh big God. brother. This is insane. Oh, I, I well, <laughs> You know, you look at TV, the state of it, the way it's at now, I, it doesn't surprise me. Right, right. And I look at crap flicks. So that's what I call it with all the stuff that's on there. But um, but with Bitchy, so uh, they invited Bitchy to be on Battle Cam in the studio, and he would go up against some of the contestants that were on there. And they, they matched him up against this one guy named Billy the Fridge. And he was this huge fat guy about job of the hut size. And he would sit on a chair and he'd have two refrigerators, one on each side. And he would open the refrigerators and his stick was pulling food out and stuffing it in his mouth. And the more disgusting the food, the better for him. Kind of like new when, nickname is Billy the fridge, by the way. Right, when, <laughs> like, like, when John Belushi, like when John Belushi took, whatever that was mayonnaise or yeah. mustard and poured it on here. That's what Billy did. <laughs> oh my so God. So he would try to throw insults at bitchy and then bitchy would throw insults at him and it became hugely popular. So the guy put all these clips together and made a movie and he had a movie premiere in Hollywood at the Egyptian theater and he invited everybody that did these deviant things like the sexual things and they, we were all on the red carpet line and I got to meet Billy in person and I was dressed as bitchy. So <laughs> it was great. He had lost like 300 pounds by then too. It's like oh, wow. he almost recognized him. Um, but there was this one guy online with us um, where the red carpet was. And I recognized him as an old character actor from the old Saturday Night Live series, like back when Belushi did it. You know, when they mm -hmm. did the mock commercials. Okay. And uh, he had gray hair. So he's like this old guy and he's with this young woman, probably like around 19 or 20. So the first thing that she says is hello. And then like, I do like in bitchy's voice. And he goes like, Hey, nice to see. You. I see you brought your daughter with you. <laughs> and it was <laughs> Isn't she a little young to be here. Oh my, oh my god. Goodness. Everyone started laughing. He got so mad he stepped out of line and <laughs> like moved back. <laughs> wow. It was so funny. So um Bitchy just kept developing and developing. And then um Kevin Dobson, who was a friend of mine who was from Knott's Landing and Kojak and 1408. So he was gonna direct Bitchy's talk show and we were gonna actually film it. Um, it's going to be a late night talk show from, oh, and S Bitchy's from Kearney, New Jersey, by the way. Of uh, course, yeah, of course, yes. Right, but Makes we spell it C-A-R -C instead of K, because it's a Kearney thing. And right. he lives in a trash can in an alley, but he loves it. <laughs> so um, he, says, he says when he goes on vacation, he could, he never has a problem throwing things away, like on the street, because he always has his can with them. And he... Um, um, so he has this talk show from a basement and it, it's so bad that when he's in, he doesn't have a, um, like a dressing room or a green room. He's got a bathroom. So when the show starts, he, you hear him flush and he comes out the door of the bathroom onto the set. And that's how like he's introduced. And he's got this horrible band, They're like the studio band. They're awful. He's like the only good musician in the band. 
and um, and it's awful. And so Bitchy has all these songs, and he he gets guests off the street. Like he can't get real celebrities, so he just finds deviants off the street, like <laughs> druggies and, and homeless people, <laughs> and he puts them on the show. And he interviews them, and some of them <laughs> OD on the show. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. I don't know so, why we're laughing at that. Uh, <laughs> occasionally, there are there were some get you know more recognizable guests that he was going to get on the show, but um, you know. Unfortunately, Kevin passed away and we couldn't do that. So I said, why don't I do it as his own podcast? And that's where the podcast is called Bitching with Bitchy. <laughs> and it's on like all these platforms like Spotify and Apple and, and whatever other streaming things are. And um, he's gotten some decent guests. Scotty was his first guest on it. And he had a kid actor on it. Um, named Zachary Rice, who was in The Babysitter, and he was one of the voices for the Minions. But he loved it. You know, like, here's this kid from Burbank, California, and Bitchy's, like, cursing up a storm. And so his reaction is, like, fuck yeah, Bitchy. And I go, like, <laughs> <laughs> he was, like, 17 at the time. It was so funny. And But he and his uh, family and I are, are friends. Um, his mom was my manager for a while. Oh, very cool. Uh, so with that, it developed, and bitchy has been a labor of love for me. Um, I wrote songs for him. He's got a theme song, and one of the lyrics is so funny. It's called, um, let's see, um, you never met a clown as dissenting as me. I make Ronald eat his burgers and Bozo drink his pee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my so, God. And then he, then he wrote these other songs that are also on the website, and they're on YouTube. And two of the songs got on a movie soundtrack for one of the worst movies ever put out in the last year. Well, probably the last 10 years. It's called Slice. I've and I got, it, I got it through. Um, Eric Roberts is in it. That gives you any indication. Um, it's, it's supposed to be like some sort of horror spoof of Caddyshack with like this, cre this <laughs> killer with a big giant golf ball head who goes around killing people on the golf course. But it's so bad. And what the director, I total falling out with the director because he's such a, um, I'm not even going to mention names, but um, <laughs> I got it through, I got it through, like you can't go research Slice, right, online. So um, we got two of Bitchy's songs on the soundtrack. And, okay. But it's the type of movie Bitchy would get his music on. <laughs> horrible movies, <laughs> like horrible effects, horrible writing. It wasn't even really written. It was basically like the director would go to conventions like Comic Cons and horror conventions and go up to someone and say, Hey, I'm making this movie. And he'd hold his phone up and go, Can you say this? And some of them would actually say it. And then he'd just insert it into the picture, whether it made sense or not. Like there's no continuity. And then he'd throw naked women in, like <laughs> casually. And they weren't even hot women. These are like. <laughs> I must be looking at the wrong slice on IMDb because I see Chance the Rapper. Is that the same one or is that a different different no, slice? Just look, look under Bitchy the Clown. Bitchy is so excited he has his own IMDb now. <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> he's made it. No union will hire him, but it, no union will induct him, but he still has an IMDb credit. And, That's incredible. So, um, <laughs> but the. Um, uh, but the way I describe the women is you have the Trader Joe's women, which are hot. These are the 99 cent store women. <laughs> 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 With the plastic bags. So, um, <laughs> but those are, that's the kind of movie and bitchy loves it. And then he, he got on Twitter and he got thrown off of Instagram and Snapchat. I mean, he's been banned from all these other platforms, oh Facebook. Uh, but fortunately, Twitter, he's still there, but he oh, gets good. suspended once every couple of weeks for getting <laughs> people. To <laughs> he finds it a badge of honor. It's like, this is my fifth time being suspended for a week. And he always <laughs> comes back with like something really profound when he comes back. So with that, I say, you know what? Bitchy needs his own merchandise. So I created a cologne for bitchy oh my God. <laughs> and we're, we're releasing it now people have been buying it. it's really it's actually a really cool scent my girlfriend and i 
uh, came up with the recipe for it, and it's called trash. We <laughs> oh, do the colognes, goodness. trash cologne. And um, the slogan is, if anyone asks, tell them you're covered in trash. And they love that. <laughs> oh, my God. So we're, we're trying to, uh, my agent is trying to get us a deal with some of the manufacturers and maybe I think Spencer's would be a great place for it. So we're yeah. working on there. Huh. I could see that, you know, mom and pop stores and Mexico. <laughs> and, oh, for sure. I see, you know, it's like, I want it to be the drug, the cologne for the drug cartels. <laughs> like their, <laughs> their official cologne. <laughs> the official scent of El Chapa. <laughs> and then, then I would tell border patrol about it. And they would know where to find them. <laughs> <laughs> I could work with them on this. <laughs> so, Dave, obviously, big news going on in the world of Hollywood, and that's these strikes going on—the writer strikes, the uh, the screen actors, the writers guild, strike. guild the yep. SAG, and AFTRA. So, how is is that affecting you right now? And and what can you tell us, or what should we, from being outside of Hollywood, know about these, uh, especially the writer strike? Right. Well, I'm not in the guild. Um, I'm not an actor. I could be as a voice actor, but I'm not in those unions. As I said, I've always kind of been on the peripheral of everything. I mean, I everything that I've gotten, all the the gigs that I've gotten, I've gotten pretty much on my own. The mm -hmm. Raymond thing, the Lampoon thing, um, all the other shows that I've worked on, the cartooning. Um, I've never really felt the need for being in the union for stuff like that. Um, and as I said, because people think of me as so weird anyway, and the, the stuff that I create is very off center. Although I do have some things that are very commercial. Um, I'm like the straight John Waters. Is okay. how some people would describe. <laughs> so um, uh, the last writer strike, I think was in 08, um, uh, you know, I did help out on some of the strike lines with them, but a lot of my friends, especially the actors, because they weren't striking then, some of them never recovered. They, they would go on unemployment. They wouldn't be getting the residuals for things anyway. So a lot of them gave up Hollywood. They had to leave and move out of California, and that bothered me. So I, I see the importance of unions, and I'm very... Um, positive pro union when it comes to things like that, defending them, the workers and the people who are out in the field. But I think some of the things that, that they want are just so outrageous. When you have someone like these A-listers going on the strike lines who make more than most of these executives, mm -hmm. when you have people like uh, Tom Hanks, who makes what a hundred billion dollars a year Seems complaining like about these things, then and you know that the when when they're shooting and I see a lot of this of people when they're actually working, they're not treated very well. I, I wrote a script about what's going on with Brian Singer and the pedophile rings that are in Hollywood that have been coming out, you know, about all the Epstein things, and they they never treat them well. The hypocrisy in Hollywood is what gets me, um, and and that bothers me with all of these actors and. And everything else and they're holding everything up and and i feel bad because you know there's extras and other background players and um, day players and things like that that are barely making it and then they they don't get treated well if they got treated better by the other actors who are complaining about this then i would be very supportive of it mm -hmm. but hollywood is such a cutthroat industry that you know, it's fine. Let them have their strikes and things like that. I also say it's not affecting me because I'm not working on anything for them right now sure. either. Right. So, and the, the projects that I am working on, I'm generating my own funds. You know, I'm getting it outside of the unions and outside of that part of studio mm -hmm. system. So I, I don't worry about that. And But that's from a personal point of view. And right. I know a lot of people will be, Oh, well, you, you should be supporting that. I've got so many calls since the strike started about, well, you're going to come to California and stand on the strike lines with the guilds, things like that. Um, now, I'm a member of the West Virginia Filmmakers Guild. 
and that's fine for me. We're, br we're bringing product and productions to West Virginia. And you know what? Non -un so many things are being shot non-union. And we'll, we'll get a SAG waiver for something if, if I'm producing something out here. I'm fine. I wrote a script for Sean Young, who's a friend, and we're going to be working on that. I've written scripts for like PJ Souls, who's a friend. And uh, so that's my take on it. But I'm sure it's not a popular opinion, but I've never been popular that way when it comes <laughs> to the industry. <laughs> Well, no, look, oh, look I, I, have a, I have a clown named Bitchy who speaks. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I, I, I appreciate them well, and I hope they, I hope they can get whatever they want, and and we can go back to making movies and TV, yeah. even yeah. though most of the stuff we make now is crap. Mm. <sighs> You're not wrong. Look, I I appreciate the honesty, and it's and it's it's uh you know for us we're on the outside of this looking in, so uh it's always interesting to get different perspectives. Uh, you know, either well, way. Yeah. So, you know, radio is the same thing. You look at radio unions and stuff and podcasts are now like, you know, you can do a podcast and get an IMDb credit now. Mm -hmm. So they, they've opened up to that. You can get uh, podcasts can win um, certain Emmys and uh, radio awards and things like that. So podcasts have become like the new FM radio. Yeah. Well, that's our that's the goal uh, for <laughs> us, you know. Um, all right, I got some rapid fire questions for you, and then we'll let you go. Uh, okay, so you've been you've don't been let me go. I don't have anything else to do. <laughs> <laughs> so so you, you've been on film sets and all that. Uh, I'm a I'm a I love food, so this is definitely a food question. What are your must haves on the craft services table? Oh my god, it used to be everything, <laughs> okay. but. <laughs> when when I started thinking more about my health as I was getting older, even though I was always kind of into it, uh, the first would be the finger sandwiches, then it would be the fruit tray, then it would be the veggie tray, then it would be whatever drinks were there, um, then it would be, you know, then it would be the dessert area. Yeah. You know, I was never into like, they would always have the granola crunches and the Quaker Oats bars no, no, and no, things no. like that. And uh, I was more into that other stuff, but <laughs> if, if there was a brownie, I would definitely go for that. And some of the sets I've worked on, they had ice cream bars. So I would huh. definitely go there. Gotcha. Sarah usually goes for the brownies at our craft services table as well, <laughs> but you know, as long as it's laced with something, right, Sarah? I haven't heard yeah. from her. I want, I want Sarah to say stuff. <laughs> Sarah's got an amazing oh. voice. She's just she 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 likes to just listen. Uh, yeah, Sarah, what you I got? do? I I I really do. I listen a lot. That's I take it all in. So, mm. so we're gonna put you on the spot. You got to come up with something. I know. Come up with something. What? Say like something? right now? I, yeah. Say. I, I, no, no. I'm even worse on the spot. Me of honestly. Bullock, by the way. Oh. What? He said he reminds you of say uh, you remind him of Sandra Bullock. Do yeah, you know she, I've I've gotten that gorgeous. so much in my life that it's crazy because I've never seen it, but I I've gotten that since I was a kid. I think it's because your um your your humongous African American stepson. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> it. yeah. Is that him in the back? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> he went through I a Michael Jackson listening. Thing, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> did, he, did he go through a he Michael went, Jackson phase no, and lose his skin color? Full Puerto yeah. Rican. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this got so weird because that's her husband <laughs> and uh, not her son. <laughs> oh my God. I have 300 hours of weird stories with celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, okay. Well, then, uh, craziest story with a celebrity that we would know. Mm. A, crazy, a crazy story that what? A cra the, your craziest story with a celebrity that we would know? Uh, well, I already told you about getting run over. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was kind of a crazy story. That's funny. Eddie uh, Deason got run over, too, by Paul McCartney. Well, I don't know if that ever really happened. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, hold on. I got a question. I, you're good. For, you're good. I do, have, I do have a crazy Eddie story. Okay. And, and you might know that reference being from Jersey. Uh, 
Crazy Eddie was a, a appliance store back in the 70s and 80s that were really big in New Jersey yeah. and New York. Yeah. <laughs> Their prices are insane. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, no, I've, I've had um, a few. So those were crazy. Um, let's see. On the set itself. Oh, there was what there was one time and and I'm not gonna name the actor, but he came on set yelling at the top of his lungs and cursing everybody off oh about God. um something or other that didn't make any sense. It wasn't about being late or that the shoot was going bad. It was just I think he went psychotic and and started throwing things. Oh wow. And he, we had flats and he started pulling the flats off of the hinges and started th throwing them around the set. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this guy is insane. Are you talking about Larry Hankin when they uh, killed off Mr. Heckles on Friends? Because he told us this story. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I'm friends with Larry. I worked with him, too. Oh, such a funny guy. But no, yeah. Larry, Larry never did anything like that with me. So. Okay. <laughs> And and what he weighs 110 pounds. I don't think he could lift anything like that. <laughs> when he when he goes to the gym, the weightlifters lift him, thinking he's a barber. I don't know. I don't know. I'm 110 pounds, and if you make me angry, <laughs> <laughs> he's great. But he's super skinny, kind of yeah, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he's but, very um, very skinny. So, so that was one of the angrier ones, but. Now, there's just been so many. There's some great ones, as I said, like Jeanette was such a great person to work with. Steven's hilarious. Uh, Steven first. Okay. Because he was flounder. Uh, mm -hmm. But he, in fact, he's the one that hired me a lot to do voiceovers for uh, movies that he directed for the sci fi channel. Really? Like I did a lot of EDR oh. and looping and things like that and, vo and voices and uh, stuff like for Lake Placid. And so I got to work with all the big actors like Corin Nemec and mm. um, and Cato. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the big A lister. Right, Dave, what's really funny is when you said flounder, I saw Chris Chris's face light up because I it think Chris was mermaid. thinking uh, Little Mermaid, and and it's I understood the reference as <laughs> no from National Lampoon's uh, Animal House. Yeah, I, you know, I I was in the same boat there actually. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I got I got to work with an animated fish. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I thought, yeah. Hey, he had a voice, you know. Yeah. Yes, he did. Well. um, I was actually dating the Little Mermaid at the time, and she's the one that got me the role on there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Chris, you're missing out on some good. Have you ever seen National Lampoon's Animal House, Chris? No, I know what. I had a shirt that had that the you know the movie title on it, but uh, <laughs> but I I never watched it. Uh, it's it one of what. In my opinion, one of the greatest National Lampoon movies. That's, and, the, that's the Toga uh, movie, right? Oh, yes. yes. Toga. Yeah. And is it supposed to be the soft? Um, yeah. I will put that on my <laughs> list of movies to watch in the next two weeks when I'm down. That and Goonies. Please watch, Please watch Goonies. both of those movies. Yes. And yeah. and <laughs> a great 80s film, No Holds Barred, with uh, with uh, Tony List. Uh, what's his name? Tiny, Tiny Lister and uh, Hulk Hogan. Yes. I I will never yeah. look at him the same anymore. Well, if you're, if you're going to try to make me feel bad, yeah, go watch No Holds Barred. Yeah. And then, <laughs> no, that was a terrible movie. That was a terrible movie. <laughs> and anything else that he's in, like, and The Fifth Element was a good movie, and I watched that before I had met him. So that's the other thing about the industry is, you know, and everyone always says it, it's like, what if you meet someone and they're not what you thought they were? Mm. Like people who are one way on camera and then are not that way in real life. And right. sadly to say, there's a lot, but there's also people that are cool. One of the things that really drove me crazy when I first started and started working my way up is that these people cannot hold a freaking conversation without a script. I said, uh -huh. what did you lose the ability to you know, improvise, have a normal conversation with that? That's ask funny. what your motivation is. You're, you're at a coffee shop. You're getting fucking coffee. That's your motivation. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you, you, do you want to know how do you ask for it? Give me a fucking cup of coffee, not like, <laughs> oh, um, do I say it like, do I ask this way? Or it's like, oh, my God, it's just 
I'll do it for you. Hey, lady, this ass wants a cup of coffee. Oh, which, which ass? There's a few of them in here. <laughs> so that that always drove me crazy. Uh, Dave, what do you have coming up? Uh, what projects are you working on? Oh, well, as I said, there's Bitchy and The Cologne. We're working on that. I'm finishing up a new horror script. Um, the movie that I did with that I wrote for Sean Young. We're working on funding for that. All of it's about funding oh, and sure. things, you know, mm. everything that gets made. I'm working with my agent. I've got um, a new children's book called Horace Finds the Meeting, which my agent has now. So we're getting out. My children's book, Bag Boy and Sweet Slob, has been winning awards all over the place. And the second book is done. So we're trying to get to a different publisher on that. And let's see what else that trips uh, me out that you've got children's books and bitchy, the clown <laughs> it's uh, no. you're all over the place. Well, that's why I can't even get invited to a kid's party. But then when I get to another party, they're like, Oh my gosh, you, you can't be here. You're so G rated. <laughs> I was, I was given that name. They said, would you ever rap? And I said, no, I hate rap. And they said, well, I'm giving you a rap name. It's G rated. <laughs> and I said, like, not in not since bitch yet, because that moniker is totally gone. Um, uh, I have my syndicated radio show, Cemetery Go Go, and that was inspired by Dr. Demento because I had always loved him growing up. And I said, you know, I had a chance when I moved out here um, to West Virginia. I actually moved out here from LA after 30 years just to get away mm -hmm. and to get a writing job. My um, girlfriend and I broke up, my fiance, she moved back to Jersey and now she's back in California. So I said, I can do my work from anywhere. So I decided to create the show when I got out here. I had an opportunity with the local radio station and I said, I'm going to do so. I want to do it with horror theme. And I thought, okay, because I'm really in the cemeteries. Oh. And What's a cool way of combining that kind of music with horror? So I came up with Cemetery Go-Go, and I wrote and recorded the theme song, and then we got in a couple of stations here in West Virginia, and then I started sending it out, and it's been it's on the station in Maryland called Wacky Radio, W-A-K-I-F-M, and uh, then it got picked up by other college stations. We're in Marietta College in Marietta, Ohio. WBNY in Buffalo, New York. Uh, let's see what other stations. There's, um, oh, and it just got picked up by Bowling Green University. And that's going to start oh, wow. airing this weekend. Wow. Oh, that's so cool. it, it, it's, it's getting on stations all over the country. And, it, and it's, it's really fun. And we play old TV commercials, like audio versions of it. I right. play old trailers of old horror movies. And then people write in letters, like letters to the characters named Groovy Grave Creeper. And so he's the host of the show. And they'll have like the creature from the Black Lagoon write in a letter, you know, like, all these, <laughs> like, like oh, Chucky cool. writes in. Or, um, oh, Annabelle wrote in one saying that like no one likes her. <laughs> that's so fun oh, that's and, so and then cool. he'll do poems from people like horror poems it's really a fun show it's one hour it's pre-recorded we have 61 uh, episodes and a Halloween special oh cool so, oh. so they rotate it and it's once a week on different stations around the country oh that's super so that's, cool that's another thing I have and then I wrote a theme song for a movie my friend Cynthia Rothrock do you know who she is? It does not ring a bell. No. Oh, she's a martial arts star. She did movies like China O'Brien, um, you know, Sleep with a Martial Artist, uh, things like that. No, it wasn't that. I just People just want to sleep with her. <laughs> <laughs> because she's really hot. But she's really nice, and I've known her a long time. Oh, so she is she cute. She's doing a, uh, she's like the number one female martial arts star of all time when it comes to movies and she's undefeated as a world champion. It's like that. It's like what they say in the Simpsons. She can kill you five times before you hit the ground <laughs> like that. And so she wrote or co-wrote this Western movie uh, called Black Creek and she's getting like all her martial starts and they did a, an Indiegogo. 
fundraiser for it and they got like half a million dollars. So I wrote a song that's like the theme song and I perform it out and hopefully we'll use it in the movie. And she's getting like all of these other people and actors. The thing is, it's like I'm concerned about and I hope it still works out. You know, when you do a fundraiser movie and then um, you get the people who are buying parts like walk-ons and speaking parts on the movie, if they've never acted before, they're not good. That can kill a movie, even if the script is good. Yeah, so, and then some of them are buying into doing um, fighting scenes with her. So crowdfunding could be great and it could be awful yeah. with the same yeah. on the incentives you give it. So I'm huh. hoping, hoping, hoping that this movie turns out good. Better than Slice. <laughs> 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 it, can't, it can't get any worse, right? No, no, no. I, I do not wish that on anyone. So I wouldn't even ask Stevie <laughs> Wonder to watch that movie. <laughs> 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 that, no, that's, you know, it, it makes um, Ed Wood look like Martin Scorsese. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so there's that. And then um, I have a band called the weird characters and we're going to be playing fright farm up in Pennsylvania. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Oh, cool. It's, it's one of the biggest um, Halloween haunts in America. It's a 300 acre farm and thousands and thousands of people come in. They've done like investigative haunts there. They have done uh, video shoots, music videos, filming there. So, our bands played there the last few years and we have all my originals that we play a lot of Halloween stuff. And then we do all these weird Halloween type songs like monster mash and stuff from Rocky horror. Cool. And this so year, can, we're hold adding, on real quick. Can I get you on the record saying there are, so there is such thing as Halloween songs. Yes. Okay. Real, real Halloween song. You and guys I got that. This them. is from a professional in Hollywood. So please, we got to yeah. remind Mary that there are I Halloween. There are I, indeed. Well, Monster Mash is a Halloween song. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Dave, every, every Halloween season, we've got another co-host, Mary, that uh, she will die on the hill that, and there is no Halloween music what makes a halloween song and i'm like you're full of shit then you should tell her about this album called halloween hoot nanny and hoot nannies the ghastly ones who they're one of my favorite sur sort of um horror surf bands um they have a bunch of stuff on there they are incredible um and they do all these kind of ghastly ghostly halloween songs and so this year we're adding of course Goo Goo Muck, because thanks to Wednesday, that song. But, but uh, the thing is, like, I always been a big fan of those bands from the 70s and 80s, like the Misfits and those kind of bands mm -hmm. um, that already did those songs. Like some of my favorite music, Halloween type music is from Return of the Living Dead. If you remember that movie, mm -hmm. I love the original living dead movies, right? Uh, like do the dead. In fact, the same group that does that does goo goo mug. Hmm. So, um, so we're going to add that to the set and, um, we dress all up in cool Halloween kind of weird costume. I was thinking of going as bitchy and performing as <laughs> bitchy. Perfect. <laughs> but, um, I I'm still deciding that because oh, bitchy it's, it's advertisement. Yes, but Bitchy only sings as Bitchy. If, like, suddenly I'm singing <laughs> Monster Mash, it's like Bobby Boris Pickett, they'd be like, hey, wait, that's not Bitchy. That's a guy dressed as Bitchy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we'll have some cool stuff that we'll dress as. And so those are some of the other things. That's I feel cool. like Chris it's nonstop. I've got so many things going on. Yeah. Chris, is that near you? Five oh. hours away. I just looked it up. Oh, that's miles not far. Away. You're closer. <laughs> so if you could go check that well, out that's not bad. 300 miles in, in la 300 miles is a two-day trip we'll we'll put it on the company card <laughs> there we go uh dave in orlando uh a trip to orlando is a is a is a one-day trip i mean it, orlando's 45 minutes away from orlando it's, it's insane oh yeah it's, I, I know especially because that before i didn't know that oh, oh you'll like this being being from florida when I was at the University of Florida, and you know where that is, right? In Gainesville? 
Yeah, my wife mm-hmm. went there. We don't talk about that. Go Knowles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was the mascot for one half season. I was the gator. What? Oh back, gosh. back in the 70s. So we used to try to eat the Indian. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, um, well, one, one of my weird jobs, and it was right outside of Orlando, is I was a projectionist at a porno theater down the street from where Pee Wee Herman was. Oh my god. What? <laughs> yeah. That was one of my weird jobs. And it was literally within striking distance of the one that he was at that he got caught in. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. And, Scott, you had a similar uh, uh, thing happen to you, didn't it, you? Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got caught there too. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> it was a different theater. It was a different theater. It, stop. <laughs> Dave, how can how can our listeners follow you? How can they find you? Uh, social links, all that good well, stuff. I'm easy to social stalk. Security. I, I, you know, I don't mind stalkers. Okay. Um, uh, well, there's the website, and you could put that up. Uh, it was snuggybear.com, but I'm switching over, so I'm with Wix. But I think I might have sent you a link to it, and then you could share that. Um, there's Facebook. I haven't gotten thrown off that yet. So they can find me on <laughs> they have Facebook. And it's easy to find my profile. It's the one where everybody from Animal House is flipping off the camera. So um, there's that. And I usually post things of where I'm appearing and, and updates. And there's links to everything there. Awesome. So they can do that. Um, otherwise, they can follow Bitchy the Clown on Twitter as long as he's not thrown off. And then there's bitching with bitchy is the podcast. And, you know, as far as for social media, I, I really am not that particular about wanting too many, all those likes sure. right now, because I, I see everybody with likes here, likes that, and they feel like their life sucks if they don't get views or likes. Mm-hmm. Oh, look today, my, like it's so sad, and I know it's probably cynical, but I'm older, so I could be. It's so great you reach that certain age, and you're allowed to be cynical. So <laughs> I'm at that wrong. age, but um, I was cynical even before that. But <laughs> you know, like they they post pictures of their food, and go, "Look where I am today." I go, "If my ex does this, she'll post while she's there live. She'll post what restaurant she's in." Oh. And go, you know, hey, murderers, you know, oh. Amy's over at this <laughs> restaurant, go get her. <laughs> She's really in the health booth. <laughs> <laughs> That'll lure her out. <laughs> show her, you know, show her a, a tuna wrap. <laughs> She'll be yours. <laughs> so, um, uh, so I, I, you know, they can find me on there. And as I said, most of it is just the working on things, the books they could find. Bag Boy and Sweet Slob on Amazon. Brain Explosion is on Amazon and at Barnes and Noble. Uh, so they can find that. The new ones, as I said, will be coming out. And, you know, I leave it to my publicist and my agent to do all of that promotion. You know, for I have an appearance agent. So when they do that, because, you know, half the time, and you know, with algorithms and things like that, only about one 20th of your followers or fan base, unless you keep circulating and refreshing, they don't know, they don't see you. It's, you it's know, I crazy. Get the, I yeah. get the same things over and over again. It's so difficult with social media, so difficult. You know, unless, unless you already, and the thing is, it's like people still don't realize unless you've already made a name for yourself in mainstream, you know, like, um, any, any of these singers or the actors are already famous from movies like that, like Taylor Swift and her Swifties and even Jeanette. I mean, Jeanette got famous from iCarly and, and yeah, I recommend her book. It's an amazing book about an amazing person. Mm-hmm. And I actually uh, just reached out to her about, cause she wants to direct. So I just reached out to her manager yeah. about directing one of my films. And I think she would be an amazing Ooh. director. Oh, that's cool. But she's given up social media. She doesn't care. So unless it's that, it's just, you know, an ego trip for a lot of people. And it's yeah. not bringing me any money. That's for sure. Right. <laughs> right. I, I would rather spend my time creating 
and letting them get it out there. Sure. And and being able to walk down the street without someone saying, hey, you're the guy that did this. You know, I, I would rather just be the creator and get it out there and, you know, do things like this, like these podcasts, which which are amazing because I think that's like the new media is the podcasters. Mm -hmm. And I know even for podcasting, breaking through um, is difficult because how many, you know, entertainment podcasts are there out there? How many things of people just going and doing different things? Because anybody could set up a podcast. Anybody, but, anybody can do it. There's 4.2 million podcast out there now there's only like 1.25 active but there's yeah, scott's counted uh, <laughs> hey, but, but, but i like i like doing podcasts like yours because one they're fun you guys are smart and funny and yeah. you, you you ask good questions there's a lot of ones that i've done where oh my gosh it's like a a plate could do a better podcast and, <laughs> often, and, and they often do <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I, I, I that means a lot. Uh, I appreciate the the, the compliment. It means a lot coming from you, and uh, of course, oh, I love it, to hear my that. My pleasure, and, and definitely. <laughs> um, so, and and I think because I think bitchy's taken off because there are a lot of people that are too scared to say things, so they hide behind it, and then when they see someone like bitchy who says things they wish they can say. I think maybe that's what's resonating with people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And and Bitchy doesn't care if he burns bridges. You know, it's like he lives in a trash can and he's happy about it. <laughs> so uh, he can go wherever he wants. He he hangs out behind restaurants and gets you know like <laughs> scraps. And <laughs> so and he's fine. He, uh, he's thinking and, and as he said, he's so happy he got on IMDb. Right. That, that is that, oh that is he, He's on the same, the wet same website with like Bozo, like Bozo right. the Clown. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bitchy is a mainstream clown. I love it. <laughs> so uh, we're hoping to still, I want to do that TV show because I think that would be hilarious. That yeah. Uh, well, Dave, thank you so much for spending the evening with us. Uh, whenever you've got projects coming up, you want to come back on, just hit us up. We'd love to have you. I, I appreciate that. You guys have been awesome and stay in touch. You have my info. And as I said, um, the, the other website will be back up soon, but the other ones they could find just by what I said, and you could share the link with it. Awesome. Will do. Dave Shelton, thank you so much. You're listening to the No New Friends podcast. We'll be right back. Psst. Hey, you, you want to join a cult? Well, this might be your lucky day. For just $2 a month and a simple blood oath, you can join our clubhouse and become a friend with benefits. In addition to the amazing feeling of donating to the poor, you will have access to Patreon-exclusive content, live shows, and maybe even a behind-the-scenes look at my secret stash. To get started, head on over to nonewfriendspodcast.com and hit join our clubhouse. Can't wait to see you at the initiation ceremony. Oh, and in the chat during our live shows, of course. Thank you for uh, coming back after those amazing commercials. Um, I know Chris always talks about how amazing those commercials are, especially that Sam Piper Vacations commercial. I know it was super stellar. Um, and thank you for listening to that awesome interview from Dave Shelton, um, very incredibly talented man. So um, I want to actually just- There's something dirty in. about when you say mayhem, just man. Uh, very funny, talented. Is it because man. I'm a homosexual? Yes, it is. It's the way you say man. It uh, <laughs> turns me on a little bit. Just, uh, just you know, put it out there. But continue, please. That's, that's what I do. Um, so we we were chatting on our break, and um, we had such fun, amazing chat that we didn't want to stop talking. So we recorded it, and um, so we're actually just going to cut right into that conversation. So it might sound a little bit choppy here, but enjoy it. Warner Brothers they market the ones that are garbage. Warner Brothers is one of the best studios ever, and they just don't do a good job. I'd with... say Disney probably is, but maybe I'm... the worst. Uh, Disney's up there. Disney is a very weak studio because they just go in sine waves. 
And like when they're good, they're great. When they're bad, they're awful. But right now they're in the whole nostalgia thing, trying to draw people mm-hmm. out. With that yeah, no. Disney, Dane and I nuts. talked about this. Um, I think last week, and w- we discussed how Disney's just—they're going into another rut, like they were in yeah, the early two yeah. thousands or the seventies and eighties. Like they're in trouble. Yeah, they need another 40s. Encanto or something like that to pull them back out of it. No, they need more of a Little Mermaid or in. Well, um, to me, Encanto was better than Prince Little of the Mermaid, Frog. but. Oh, God, no. is Little just Mermaid's a the best late. Disney movie. No way. No way, dude. No way. Little Mermaid is the best animated wow. Disney movie by far. Better start recording. It's going to be a fight. One. We need to do a, some We need to do <laughs> some kind of Disney debate between the two of us because it would make fantastic content. You and I, I like. would fight. Oh, my God. I'll It'd be so good. It would be so good. I like when Daddy and Papa fight. I texted Chris and I said, miss you. Who? Chris. Who's that? Chris, y'all. Who? Mm. I said, that I miss you. That broken dick? Mm-hmm. And he said, he miss you more. Soul, I forgot him. <laughs> and uh, I said, I'm starting after dark. Well, during dark. And he goes, I'm at a blur- bur- burlesque show. Wish I had a vasectomy so I could jerk off. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> oh, God. You can do that anywhere. Yeah, because if you have a vasectomy, there's no clean about it. You can do that anywhere. <laughs> oh, I listened to that part there in uh, that episode, and I just felt so yeah. ill to my stomach. <laughs> I have a was... great vasectomy joke, and I'm waiting to be able to put it in my segment. Um, <laughs> and then I said, uh, uh, FYI, they completely take their clothes off. He goes, Hi, I don't think they do that on this one. I hope not. My whole it's family Alaska. is here. They're I too don't cold. Think, yeah, I don't <laughs> think they know what, what it was. That's funny. Uh, oh, they should do that on a Disney cruise, but they're all dressed like Disney princesses. What is oh, your you problem, sir? Half the purchases are underage. No. <laughs> oh, that'd be fun. Like, they're not. They're not. No hey, but year-old. it's international water, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> 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 All right. Should we like <laughs> go through see. this for content? Because that was actually a pretty funny. I, this has all been recorded. Oh, oh thank God. God. Thank God. Also, Scott, I realized Mary made a whole bunch of jokes about me not eating, but we talked about that before recording started for the main show. I know. I know. Do I, I need know. to re-record that? No. No, because I think I called you a robot in the middle of it. That's fair. Pretty sure. I don't know if we're recording or not or not. But... Like the... I don't know. No. Now you're just thinking about princesses and burlesque out. <laughs> You'd be surprised I mean... how easy it was for me to find that monorail segment because I knew to look for the Bell episode. <laughs> well, I mean, every time Tarzan comes out on stage, I oh my goodness, yeah, I'm sure your gay percentage would go up too. I'm. Uh, you ever seen the meet and greet with him? Oh, the meet? No, and greet? they have the a meet, meet and greet where he's wearing a unitard. No, no, no meet seriously with an A. No, not that, <laughs> not that kind of meet. Meet. <laughs> but um, look, no, he there was a meet and greet, and he wore a a skin colored like unitard. Skin... <laughs> they do that in like weird their nipples. Things. It was hilarious. Because we just saw Frozen the musical, and they have like a naked dance basically in the sauna, and they all have unitards on. But then the one guy comes out shirtless later. I'm like, just take it off, Disney. Oh. Yeah, I know. Just maybe just don't do that part. <laughs> what? See, Warner Rapunzel was the Disney princess of... where I knew for a fact I was straight. Like, <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Let's dig she was that. 18. <laughs> Elaborate, please. <laughs> Dude, Rapunzel though, like. It came out in 2010, right? So I was I was 10 at the time, and I was like, "Damn, you know, I don't know." I mean, is, is this a you do we really do, should we talk about who we think the hottest is? Because <laughs> I, Rapunzel was 18, so I'm in the clear here. I'm all about a. I'm not talking Judy Garland, you know. Well, <laughs> is that a Unitard on Tarzan on this picture? Oh, I'm send it. I I think it's a I I know I think it's a, no that is not a Unitard. It's just bad face makeup for sure. Yeah, that's the, pretty bad. That's makeup. bad. It just looks like you're dirty. All right, so okay. Who's John Feet? Real, real, real quick. All right, so question for you guys. Okay, age doesn't matter here. Okay, because these princesses are not real. Um, and okay, and the the face characters in the park are of age. So well, you're let's really say covering all legal, aren't you? Yes. Let's assume that <laughs> they're all the high school bleachers <laughs> joke. Let's say that they're all in there uh, above twenty one. Okay. Let's just 21. assume that. Well, the twenty one. Is even 18 is too young for me. Oh, the, you want them to be able to rent a car. Okay. So they're all at least 25. Uh, uh-huh. All right. Uh, who Who is your, and I'm not going to give us three names. Who's everybody's uh, fuck, marry, kill Disney prince or princesses? Oh, let's start with Nick. 
Let's start with Nick. Well, I need time now that I'm allowed to have a prince too. Yeah, you well, didn't. Of course, you can we have a prince. Because before we were just we just have princes if we want. Yours would just be kill, kill, kill. Uh, you know, there uh, would there's, be. There's some Disney princesses I'd probably fuck. I don't know. What? All right. Wow, they'd be your first. Well, I mean, obviously <laughs> Ariel, because you know the gays have gills. So yeah, she's a fish. <laughs> <laughs> she's a fish. <laughs> okay, um, definitely Moana. I just feel like she's just a powerful woman. Okay, is that your Mary? Uh, yeah, I'd probably marry her. She's she's she can be dominant. I feel in my relationship, which I need. Um, I'd probably kill Aladdin. Honestly, I don't find oh. him that. Yeah, he's just kind of needy and annoying. <laughs> you know he was modeled after Tom Cruise. Yes, he was. Exactly. Ever since I've learned that, every time I see him, all I see is Tom. Do you Cruise. just picture a Scientology then? Yeah, yeah he's <laughs> trying to convert up. I mean, Ariel was what Alyssa Milano, right? Yes, I believe you're right. I, I still have no right. clue who that is, but I oh heard. Oh my the god! Name. If you're older, you would. She was from uh, Who's the Boss? Oh, they made the joke about that one show in the Community episode. The what? They made a joke about that show in a com- episode of Community. I've never what heard I? of that show. I've never heard of Who's the Boss, but they made a joke about Who's the Boss in Community. That's why I know about it. Probably. And Jeremy Miller referenced uh, hanging out with uh, Alyssa Milano because Milano, yeah. they were on the soundstage right next door. Oh, that's right. I remember listening. That was a good episode. That was an excellent interview. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, sophisticated gentlemen. Fuck, Mary, kill, Disney, Prince, or princesses. Um. Wait, did you? Okay, so you said, Nick, I'm sorry. Did you finish? I I always finish. <laughs> See, I'm not used to letting someone else finish, so I, know, yeah. I apologize. <laughs> Nobody cuts them off. For it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Eric, probably fuck Ariel, marry Moana, and kill Aladdin. Okay. All right, sophisticated gentleman. Hmm. Um. I'm probably gonna. I have the official list of the princesses pulled up of here. Of course you do. <laughs> uh, Can't just well, improv sure. it. I would probably f Rapunzel. Um, probably marry Tiana. You know, she's very responsible. She has a good job. Um, and I would probably kill, oh God, Aurora and Moana both annoy me. I'd probably go Aurora. Although I do have actually a question from a listener. If your significant other was killed in a horrible tragedy, which Disney princess would you knock up? I've been asked to ask that question here. Okay. I guess they're F, right? All right. So, so is that it? So this is a question and a question now. So wait. Wow. If who gets killed? If your significant other was killed in a horrible tragedy, which Disney princess would you knock up? Hmm. All right. So let me go with my fuck, Mary kill real quick. Okay. Um, I am, I am fucking the shit out of Rapunzel. I am marrying Belle and I am going to kill Snow White. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Or, wait, or wait, hold on. Is this Rachel Zegler as Snow White? Because no. Rachel Zegler no, I, I love Snow White with Zegler. just the annoying voice. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. The, this is the 1930s Snow White. What I'll probably yeah. do, with, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. I'm actually just going to take out Prince Charming, okay, because he's annoying as well. Terrible animation. Which one? The one that kisses Snow White. So that's Florian's. Prince Charming is from Cinderella in 1950. Okay. According to ABC's hit, <laughs> hit show, face? Once Upon a Time... <laughs> Uh, Snow White's prince's <laughs> name so was Prince Charming. Okay, so I'm going off of that. So I'm taking out Prince. I'm taking out Snow White's prince, so that he never kisses her, never wakes her up. They both die. Okay. Hey. Uh, which one would I knock up? I'm thinking Cinderella would make the best mom. I can definitely see that. So I'm gonna go Cinderella, and she's like the first princess, really. I mean, I mean, Snow White was, but. Nobody likes. I mean, it depends if you go back to the 1920s because the silent film laughograms did. Okay, have stop. Uh, <laughs> oh, All right, oh, uh, Game Master Ryan. All right, I'll, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. Okay, because she was considered Disney princess. I'm gonna f Esmeralda from Hunchback of Notre Dame. Oh, that's a good yeah, one. By far the best looking one. <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, Mary Tiana because she can cook and I do like to eat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And uh, kill, yeah, Snow White. That, that voice, she can just die. Um, as far as knocking up, I think uh, Belle would probably be a good mom. Mm. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, no, no, no. She's bad decisions, bad decision making on her part. Uh, Jasmine, okay, I could see that. But wouldn't you be worried about your kids around the pet tiger? 
No, my kid would love a pet tiger. We saw All right. what happened in 2020 with Tiger King. Yeah. Um, I'd probably impregnate that. Now that you say it. <laughs> now that you say it. <laughs> so impregnate. clinical. Um, I guess probably Belle because she likes a man with f- fur. I'm very f- hairy. Okay. But I do, right. but I do, I do manscaped on there. I use a lot more 4.0 <laughs> and I use, I did use the promo code NNF for 20% off of it. Nice. So. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sophisticated gentleman, which one would you knock up? So which one would I knock up? Um, um, probably Pocahontas. Actually, I feel like Pocahontas knows the world pretty well. So okay, all right. Uh, some other great comments in chat. Uh, one night with Tink. You're not wrong because you'd be have you'd be having that angry sex with her. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know because she's a, a hothead. Yeah, Tinkerbell was also fun. four inches tall. <laughs> oh, Scott, you'd be all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, like when she when she you know uh, gets bigger, like Julia Roberts. What are you talking about in what? Hook? Tinkerbell. It's not a Disney bigger, movie. Hook. It's also not a great movie. It has like a thirty seven right. percent of Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> it's an okay movie. I thought Hook was good. <laughs> all right, so uh, tonight's been an, uh, an amazing night. We've had. Um, an amazing interview we've had some awesome special guests back on thank you very much ryan as well as sophisticated gentleman for joining us yet again since chris um tore his penis or balls or something no it's because you booked him on a vacation oh yeah i forgot i booked him on a vacation um and if you want to book a vacation contact me at nick at sandpipervacations.com let me know that the no new friends podcast sent you um so yeah, thank you all for listening. Thank you to my co-host, Scott, who is um, part of the amazing No New Friends podcast, which is the top three podcasts in Orlando weekly. How amazing is that? So okay. thank you for listening. We'll see you next week. Well, scratch that. I'm going to tell you about oh, okay. the interview that's coming up after the break. Yeah, that's and what because I said. We're, yeah. we're, they said, when we come back, I'm going to tell you about it because we're going to do segments one and three. Dave Shelton will be segment two. That's why I'm sending it to you. Oh. To yeah, for, I think oh, you were going to after Alex. the break, you were going to introduce. the. And, that's what I thought. Right. No, because at the at the uh, I, I'm the I'm going to. Wow. When I rejoin from the from the break, it's going to be right into the. Uh, that's Shelton. why I was sending it to you. to. Oh, you're sending it to me now. The guy that's okay. coming up. Nick, can yeah. you send him a gummy? He needs something. Oh my god! <laughs> I that high Jesus that Christ. did I not make sense? <laughs> but you did what he told you to do, and then he didn't know what you did. I'm trying yeah. to be a good host. My, you I know you're you doing drinking podcasts, Scott. You're doing great. I'm not drinking tonight. You're <laughs> doing you a great job. <laughs> Maybe I should. Exactly. Oh yeah, that's the issue. Yes. Okay. Why don't you try that again? I'll just edit that out. I'll just. I'll just listen. All right. Top notch stuff. <laughs> No New Friends After Dark has been brought to you by Sandpiper Vacations. Sandpipervacations.com. Just check out our website, no new friends podcast.com. Become a friend with benefits. Check out our sweet merch and so much more. This has been a No New Friends Entertainment LLC production. <laughs> <laughs>